Hello everyone, welcome back to Yaje's Garden. Yaje here, excited to share another gardening video with you. Today's video is my favorite, favorite video to make. It is a garden tour tips and chores video where I get to showcase my garden, show you what is growing, and also share with you some tips. The idea is that by watching this video, maybe you pick up one or two or three things that will help you with your own gardening journey. So come along with me. Let me share with you what has been happening here in the month of March. Here is a macroscopic view of my backyard, the big view. I have plants going on this way, and then I also have a garden on this other side of my backyard. So that's the large view. Now let's get into the details. If you do not know, my garden is here in Houston, Texas, zone 9A. And I cultivate like specialty vegetables, shall I say, culturally meaningful African vegetables here in my backyard. I've been doing so for many, 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 many years, over 20 years now in this same backyard. And I believe I have acquired knowledge and experience on how to grow some of these tropical vegetables out here in the diaspora. So I'm on a mission to get as many people as I can growing these vegetables, teaching people about them, showcasing our nutritious medicinal vegetables to be well. So if you're new to this channel, I hope you subscribe. If you enjoy what I do, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I think I already said that. <laughs> Comment. You shall just interact with me, okay? Thank you so much for your encouragement and your support. I'm going to start the tour by showing you what is going on on this bed right here. This one that I have at the very front of my garden. Um, I did a lot of work to put this bed here together. It has a variety of vegetables and I did that for a purpose, companion planting. And then also when you approach my garden, this is the first thing that you see. So it is meant to showcase some of the vegetables that I am growing. So let me show you what is going on here. Guys, let's start with my tomatoes, which I'm so, so proud of myself. Okay, so these are the Paul Robeson tomatoes. They're highly prized tomatoes in the gardening world. I have three of them, and I think I may have made a mistake already by planting them too close. They're spaced two feet apart. Oh, well. So my tomatoes are about, let's see, because I started them from seeds on the 3rd of February. Today is the 31st of March, so eight weeks old, about that. I transplanted them to the garden when they were about seven weeks old or so. And I did the side planting, which just means that I buried a lot of the stem. I laid it down like this. And then I buried the majority of the stem over here to encourage a lot of root production from the stem because tomatoes can develop roots from the stem. And the more roots you have, the more support, the more it can absorb nutrients and water because tomatoes are a heavy feeder. But before then, I amended the soil by adding tons of eggshells. I buried eggshells in here, crab shells, a lot of things to improve the calcium content of the soil because tomatoes love calcium. I did not know that. They are prone to calcium deficiency. Uh, it will cause your tomatoes not to be healthy and develop what is known as blossom rot disease, something like that. But anyway, I did the side planting and then I'm going to do a single vine staking, which just means that I will not let, I would not let things like this, this little bud here grow. I will come out here when I find one, I prune it, throw it away so that I have just a single vine growing up. That way I control the bush and when you don't have too much bush then you reduce the risk of disease so yeah those are my tomatoes it looks like it's even starting to flower what i would do is also plant some marigolds around here i need to buy that and plant this right here is a pollinator plant I'm not sure what that is i bought a bag of pollinators pollinator seeds and threw some here and some in the front anyway i'm gonna plant some marigolds here 
And then what I have here are basil, a type of African basil. It's a good companion plant for tomatoes. Okay, so in my containers here, some leeks, which I bought the leeks and saved the bottom, planted out so this here. This is my bitter leaf. This is like Venonia amygdalena, the narrow leaf, bitter leaf. I've had this one growing in this large grow bag for many years. It comes back every year. And that is because since this is a fabric bag, the roots have penetrated. So it's still getting nutrients. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is a type of bitter leaf. And this is another kind of bitter leaf. This one, still Venonia amygdalena. But you can see that the color is slightly different. This one does not go as deep green. This is more of a deep forest green. This one is more of a light green color. And the leaves usually can be very broad so this is the broad leaf variety which quite frankly i don't mind it's usually not as bitter as this one but it is bitter nonetheless i've also had this growing for at least three seasons now and i started them from seeds many years ago so i have the bitter leaf over there like that see one two three four it does grow tall later on and then let's see my peanuts remember my jungle peanuts that i'm growing they're here spaced out about 15 inches or so apart a little more than a foot apart all the way over here they're doing very well i have them in the front like that because they don't grow as tall and they should grow and cover up the space around and then these are my pigeon peas the pigeon peas, the northern adapted pigeon peas that I'm trying out for the first time this year. Started them from seeds um, earlier this month and they are in the garden now. They're going to grow quite tall. And then in these country, I have different types of peppers. Um, in these grow bags, these are my scotch bonnet peppers, red scotch bonnet peppers in here. And then over here, I have my habanero, which is starting to fruit. Maybe I need to pinch off these early fruits. I don't know. But I started them from seeds myself on the 24th of January. And two months later, we're starting to get some fruit there. You would see that I did not put the scotch bonnets very close to my habaneros to avoid cross-pollination. What else do I have going on here? Here I have my okra. I pre-sprouted them using the paper towel method, planted them out in the garden. I'm eventually gonna thin this one out and just leave one. But for now, those are my okra plants over there. The Clemson spineless, that is your regular you know, type of okra. I have it here for easy access for harvesting. You know, When I come to the garden, I don't need to step on the bed. I can just easily harvest my okra. So it's here. And it's also going to grow and shade some of my peppers and some of these plants when it gets very hot in the summer. As you can see, I have raised bed gardening going on in the cinder blocks back there. And let me just say something about how to design your raised beds, especially if you're doing cinder blocks. In short, any kind of raised bed in the garden. The number one thing that you need to think about that you need to really incorporate into the design is access how are you going to access every part of that garden let me show you are you able to walk freely even run if this was a truck could you run around it could you run around your garden okay make sure you're able to walk around your garden this is important in the designing of your garden and then the second thing you need to think about is access can you reach can you reach can you reach without stepping on the bed okay can you reach every part of your bed without stepping on it so keep that in mind as you design your garden can you walk around it and can you access the bed this is important i continue to see people make a lot of mistake um, a lot of mistakes when designing your garden and guys these are my freshly germinated freshly sprouted bow or kunde 
these are the cowpea leaves in limbum we call it war nkuar so i'm trying these out this particular one out for the first time i've planted the war from cameroon before but these are apparently from east africa the bo or the kunde i have them here doing so well if you're wondering what these are these are rabbit rabbit poop rabbit manure it's supposed to be even better than chicken manure i threw some here in this little patch that is where i have my kunde or my bow and because they're a legume they're supposed to fix nitrogen to the soil and i have them next to the tomatoes because you're not supposed to mix tomatoes up with other nightshades and stuff like that it can go can grow close to you know this is a legume that's the bitter leaf it's okay i didn't even show you this one but over there i have some basil tomatoes can be grown together with basil and the bitter leaf so it is fine over here and then on this row what we have here are my garden eggs these are my garden eggs which, which i planted out in the garden last week they were attacked by some biting and chewing um, pests so i had to put a collar around i put some eggshells i did everything that you need to do to take care of slugs and snails in the garden eggshells i didn't have too many of them so i put these collar the buckets around it's just the top part of the bucket that i you know put around and then i also um, bought some slug killer and sprinkled around that's what you see here and it has helped with the snail or the biting chewing insect issue see how they came after this manja manja man. yeah so those are my garden eggs i have five of them doing beautifully well over here on these two beds i have jaman jama which i planted like about seven to ten days ago over here is the bamoon variety and then here is the bamenda variety they've just sprouted as you can see barely coming up my jaman jama and then way over here i have some peppers these are habaneros and then these are regular red peppers from cameroon guys i'm trying out something new this year i'm growing potatoes in buckets i'm sure i've already made a couple of <laughs> dangerous mistakes but we learn as gardeners my plan is to keep adding soil i think at this point i need to add more soil which is similar to healing potatoes but in a bucket so i'm gonna keep adding more soil as the tomato as the potatoes grow i bought the seed potatoes from sam's club there are different types and i think so far so far so good i did plant some sweet bitter leaf seeds over here it's barely breaking ground as you can see they're coming up so this bed is going to be my sweet bitter leaf bed and my lone not lone <laughs> my pair of ugu plants I have two of them growing over here and the idea is that they will eventually find that fence i will trellis and let it find the fence and cover up this area guys i'm growing all kinds of peppers this year again some in grow bags some in ground i have habaneros i have scotch bonnets i have papa's pepper i have another kind from cameroon all kinds of hot peppers i love to grow peppers some of my favorite things to grow so guys don't judge me i love peppers okay i have some growing in ground and then i have some growing in containers regular buckets and some in grow bags i'm going to show you what is going on here so this is my self-watering bucket i have a, a reservoir of water buried in here so i just add water through this pipe it goes in there and then um, it waters my peppers from the bottom see this hole when there's excess water it comes out through this hole because i would not want to be dealing with watering peppers in containers in the summer so i have my all kinds of peppers over here there's habaneros scotch bonnet and all of that and then over here habanero peppers this color is to prevent 
slugs and snails from eating the leaves of my peppers there's more in ground here and then over here are peppers in grow bags i did not do that setup for self-watering because this is a fabric bag when the peppers grow big the roots are gonna penetrate the bag and they can always find water you know in in ground directly so that's why i did not fit it with the pipes and all of that jazz over there but yeah see how beautiful my peppers are doing see this is why i installed this collar because of this see the biting and chewing insect you can tell something is coming out at night and eating the leaves but i'll fix that i have at least 27 peppers <laughs> last count 27 peppers in ground and in containers see what i did guys this is where you would normally have the air condition hopefully the noise is not too bad um the side of the building where nothing happens i made that into my bitter leaf garden i have some in containers and some in grow bags and what you see as mulch is dried leaves over here so this is what we have guys what you do not know is that I cut the bottom of these buckets before putting them here. That way, the bitter leaf roots can eventually find the ground, like they can grow directly in ground at some point, okay? So even though I planted the bitter leaves in containers, um, I moved them out here, you know, because I did this over the winter, moved them out in the spring, cut the bottom of the container and sat it here so it looks like uh, a sunken garden so those are my bitter leaves and these are my giant 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 fabric bags with more bitter leaves just wanted to share that with you and guys this is my compost bin right here i do compost look so i have this tarp here to create warmth so my stuff can break down you see plantain peels, leaves, grass, everything is in there. Cover it. And then I have some soil here that if it gets too wet, I add I add to I add the soil to the compost. Okay, let's take a look at the garden from this angle, guys. Doesn't it look beautiful? It's starting to green up. By next month it will be a completely different story i can promise you that guys this is the other side of my garden okay over here is what i consider my salad corner i have bell peppers um, herbs i have this wheelbarrow that i recycled and i have my salad greens in there i also have my uvias over here two in ground and one in a container and then over here I have planted some jam and jamma and my pumpkin. I'll show you what is going on on the other side as well. On the other on. side of my building, over here, I have a bed of jam and jamma over here. Jam and jamma can do well in a partially shaded area as well. So I have some in full sun right here and then over there. That does not get full sun, but the jam and jamma is doing well so far. Here are more peppers in grow bags over here. What else do I have? Oh, we are not done yet. We are not done yet. I'm also planting some stuff in the front and my garden bed, guys. In my garden bed over here at the front of the building, I have some things going on. Let me show you. I promise I'm going to plant some flowers here, but we're also going to have something that people can easily harvest if they visit. So I have sent leaves, I have garden eggs, I even planted peppers, and this is rosemary, this is bitter leaf, that's the Cape gooseberry, more peppers, garden eggs, and garden eggs over here. And then I've planted a bunch of pollinators over here. I just bought a pollinator mix and threw the seeds, so that's what we have. And that was a tour of my garden in the month of March. A lot has been put in place and come April, everything will just grow.
thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up leave a comment and share my videos please subscribe to join the tribe i hope i earned your subscription until next time grow a garden happy gardening everybody bye